Hello, my name is Per Ulla Malmqvist. I am a fire protection engineer and a former battalion chief from Sweden. And uh, normally I work with fire and rescue information and intelligence for Swedish fire brigades. And the last year I have also been employed by the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency in a pro project where we have demonstrated that it's possible to put out battery fires and more specifically EV fires by flooding them with water inside. So I think that right now we have enough information to say that we can put out EV fires and that in a very short time and with a very small amount of water compared to the recommendations that are today. I would say that this is a kind of an airbag moment. If you remember when the airbags came to vehicles, there was a lot of fear and anxiety in the fire and rescue services about those airbags. And then when we learned how to deal with them, it was not a big problem anymore. And if we want to, I think we could be at that point of time about battery fires in electric vehicles. The video you will see is a presentation I made for the Swedish Fire Officers Association last week. So please enjoy the video. It's a project with the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency about how to extinguish or if it works to extinguish lithium-ion batteries with a flow of water in the battery pack. What we have done is we have tried on everything from small pack with 26 kilowatt hours up to a full pack up to a full car with different tools in the intent not to test the tools but to demonstrate that it's the water flow inside the pack that can help us to put out those fires. And as a starter, I would like to start with this about propagation of thermal runaways in battery packs. You see, what happens is that we have a fire in a cell, and that cell fire is heating up cells adjacent to the first cell. And in that way is the propagation spreading the thermal runaway in the battery pack. So the theory we have been working with, that if you get water inside the battery pack, then you can cool the adjacent cells and the burning cell and in that way stop the propagation. And as you see, it's just a regular fire in between the thermal events. And this is nothing new. There are tool makers that have said this and there are car manufacturers that have solutions to do this. So we're not claiming that it's new in that way. What we want to do is to try it out if it could be a feasible method for the Swedish fire and rescue services. We have to start with a risk assessment since we are making hole and injecting water into a battery pack. Of course, the electrical hazards that I will get back to in a slide or two. The toxic smoke we handled by using as SCBA and full protective PPE and felt that was enough to handle that. Arcing will or can happen, but that will be a local problem in the battery pack and is nothing that will affect a firefighter. Jet flames will happen or can happen, and I will also talk about those later. And the final risk we assessed was explosion, where we had the battery packs, they are built for handled explosion internally. And if we look at the electrical hazards, when we make hole in a battery pack, the question is if the person making the hole can become a part of a closed circuit with the traction battery of the vehicle. And it's very unlikely to happen. But we identified two unlikely cases that could happen. One is if the vehicle is on charge. And the other one is if the firefighter touches the body of the car and the metal of an extinguishing tool at the same time and you also have some unlike events going on with the battery. To handle those risks we have three important things to, to remember or consider. The vehicle should never be connected to a charging station when making a hole in a battery pack. Do not touch the car body and have a tool inside the battery pack at the same time. 
and use only tools designed for battery penetration. In that way, we get an extra layer of safety since the manufacturers of the tools know how to use them and we can educate for that. So it's done in a safe way. The risk assessment of flames. We made an assumption that flames will appear in about the same place all the time. That is, if we have an opening in the battery pack, it's likely that opening will still be able to transmit flames and smoke later on. In the... There might be new locations added due to burn through in the battery. And we have to be able to consider that as a possibility. And hole making with an axe is most critical because it's done without his water flowing. But with a full PP and a prepared protective nozzle that manages the risk, we decided that it's safe enough to work in that manner. If we would get a jet flame or some other minor flames on the person close to the battery pack, that will deal with that. And one more word about that you're probably thinking about, at least when you've seen this. Can we start using this method after this? No, this is not a complete method. We have tried to see if a flow of water will make use inside a battery pack. And you cannot do this as an individual firefighter either, because you have to remember that it's the employer who decides what methods and tools and what training is needed to use new methods in the fire service. Even if this, I'm talking for the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency in this presentation, and even if it's a government agency, it's still the employer who decides. That's very important. The trial we did with the small packs, we had three sub packs with four modules each, total of 26 kilowatt hour per small pack. They were all 100% state of charge. The complete battery pack, 24 modules, 67 kilowatt hours, 100% state of charge. And the car, 27 modules, 75 kilowatt hours, 100% state of charge. And both the full car and the full pack had 15 minutes of burn time before we started extinguishing. The equipment we used was this mobile lens from Germany. We had the cold cut system cutting extinguisher. Tried to get a hold of the Rosenbauer extinguishing jack, which we couldn't get a hold of at that time. We used a regular firefighting axe. Uh, one inch hose, I think it was, and one straight stream nozzle. The first test here is with the cutting extinguisher on a small pack. You see here we have the thermal runaways going on inside. It's venting through the vent openings in the battery pack, and that is something that exists on vehicle battery packs as well. You see there is a lot of fast forward here, and that is because there is a lot of time with very little going on. So we had minutes between the different thermal events. And that means if you get to a real fire in a vehicle, for example, it could be very slow when you get there. And then it will pick up st speed for a while and then it will return to a slow state again. And that is due to the propagation of the heat inside the battery pack. And you can see we had the flames and the smoke coming from the same openings all the time here. What we tried to do when we started the extinguishing was to hit the right spot where the thermal event was going on. And we used a thermal imaging camera to, to find that spot. And you see here, like this is nothing showing. You could believe that there is nothing going on in the battery pack, but we have a continuous propagation of the thermal runaway, but just now with a little or no, not much happening. Here we start using abrasive 
to grind hole. That for five seconds we do that with the cutting extinguisher, and then we have hole in the battery pack, and then we flood it with just plain water. And this plain water, you see, there is a lot of smoke coming at one time, and that is when the water had flowed to the hot place, so it was steam we saw in this when that happened. And now you can see that we have less and less activity from the battery pack. So what we looked at to stop flowing water was when we have less smoke, we had less noises coming from the battery pack, and then where we have stopped flowing, we saw that we had 50 degrees centigrades, 120 degrees F as the hottest on the pack. And if we had more than that, uh, then we would start flowing again. But in this case, we analyzed the pack. After 15 minutes, we put it aside. We analyzed the pack on the modules, how much voltage there was in the modules. And by that, we could see how much affected they had been. They are not complete batteries, but we can see that we have two battery modules that are not burnt, and we have two battery modules that are partially burnt. So with that we saw that we could stop the propagation of the thermal runaway on those in this pack here. The next test we did was the Muro lens on a small pack, so same setup as before. We wanted to have the propagation go from one module to the, to the module, but it was hard to see on this pack as well. Here we can see that we have the same thing with less intensity and more intensity. Right now we have a thermal propagation of thermal runaway going on inside the battery pack, but it's not visible from the outside, maybe from a little amounts of smoke. And here we are going forward with the middle lens, and you can see that we have a flow of water from it. And that means that when we make the hole, just as with the cutting extinguisher, we flood the battery with water at the same time. And you will see that in the next test, that makes a whole lot of difference to have water going into the battery pack at the same time. They're hammering the nail or lance into the pack, and we have it flowing, same thing here, looking for when smoke is becoming less and less intensive, no sounds. And then we start measuring the temperatures. And the basis of this was that we had three modules not burnt and one partially burnt, but we stopped the propagation in the first module where it was burning. Again, we thought we were going to have it to the second module, but we didn't. The third test was making a hole with an axe and copper piping on a small pack. And here we had a little extra concern about the safety. So we have an extra nozzle man covering. I am the one making the hole with the axe. It was a great day at work. And we had the extra nozzle man covering me while doing this, if we would get an additional hole or with jet flames or things like that. What you can see here again is the smoke and flames coming from about the same openings all the time. So what we decided was that I'm, I was going to sit at the upper right part of the battery pack on, on this video. And we had, again, long period of nothing happening. And then we get a period with smoke and flames. And the batteries of today, they're very well designed. They're made to be able to extinguish one cell, can be able to burn out and not spreading to the other cell. So it can be a very slow process, this here. And just because nothing is showing, it still can be a propagation going on that will kick off in a minute or two afterwards.
and you can see the prediction that upper right corner was going to be good still holds here. You can also see we have some cables going into the batteries that the thermocouples that we measured the internal temperature of the battery pack. Not for evaluation after, but to see that we had a process going from the beginning. And now I think I'm going to hit where we had burnt out cells. And as you can see, we get a pretty much smoke with a a good speed coming out there and also some flame soon. Which means I didn't hit where the uh, burning have been. I started a new thermal propagation here. But that's no big deal. We know that the battery is gone anyway. So just getting one more cell or a couple of more cells isn't anything to be bothered about. The most important thing is to not make holes before you know that it's not self handling itself, the battery construction. And here, as soon as we get water into the battery pack, it starts making use of itself. And we will have a lot of steam in the beginning, and then the smoke will become less and less intensive. And after a while, we had it sitting for 15 minutes, observing with a thermal imager, and after that, we put it away for three days before making the analysis. And here we saw that we have a, had a spread to the second module. But all modules still contain some voltage. So that means that not all cells in a module was burned. So we have saved a lot of cells. Not saved so they can be reused because they are useless, but saved that they don't have to pollute and get out in the environment as a burnt, burnt stuff. So we will reduce the environmental impact by putting out the battery fires in this way. And now we're getting to the full pack, 24 modules, 67 kilowatt. Here it was, we also decided to do this with an ax to demonstrate the flow of water. And here, you can see the spare or the backup nozzle man up top. So he's just focused on me if the flames go the wrong way. What you can notice here is that we have flames on the back side and in the front side. So we, and we saw afterwards that we had thermal runaways on both sides of the battery pack. And you can see here that the muscles of mine aren't that good. I actually hit some kind of metal that was protecting, it made it hard to make a hole, so I had to start on somewhere else. But that was good, because now you can see that it's not really important where you make the hole, as long as the water can flow to where it's hot. Now we're just cooling it off, so I'm going to make the hole big enough. And there was a new cell going off there. And as I said, we had thermal runaways on both sides of the battery pack. And what you should notice is the flames from the other side. When I start flowing water into the battery pack, that it immediately will stop the flames on this side, but there will be flames on the other side for a while longer. We had a small flow of water, like we have been between between 6 and 25 gallons per minute on all the tests. So it's not about the flow rate, it's about getting the water inside and having the ability to flow around. And now you can see that there is no flame on the other side either. And soon you will start seeing that there will be water popping up from the other side. Something to remember here is that, that the rescue sheets for the vehicles will be very important because there could be battery constructions where you have several compartments in the battery pack. And that can make it very important to, to get the water into the right compartment. After this test and the end, three days later as well for this one,
you can see all the green numbers and it, that is the voltage on the modules and here it was 0.8 volt modules. We have a lot of unburned modules which is we have put out the battery fire very early in the process compared to letting everything keep burning. Now it was time for the full car. We have to choose tools from the beginning. We choose between the middle lens and the cutting extinguisher. And since we wanted to be able to make this without touching the body of the car, and we wanted to be able to, to reach the middle of the car with the tool, and the middle lens was missing that extension pipe, we decided to go with the cutting extinguisher with an extension pipe. We had 15 minutes from start of the fire until we started extinguishing. During that time, the car got completely involved in fire. And we used the combination of a regular nozzle and a cutting extinguisher to put it out. We used a total of 750 liters, which is 200 gallons of water, and a total of 10 minutes to put this full electric vehicle out. And for the battery itself, it took us four minutes and 240 liters, 65 gallons of water to extinguish the battery pack. So this was the fifth test. And it was a success at this setup for this test as well. You see here, there is a lot of green voltage numbers here, which many of them are unburnt, totally unburnt, and a couple of them are partly burnt. The other the thing we wanted to look for was if it was possible to predict the danger zones. And as I spoke about earlier, that we had flames and smoke coming from the vent openings, and they kept coming from those vent openings, and we could get new openings, but in our cases, that didn't turn out to be a very big problem. That could happen, however. So that is something we need to consider when making a method. But what we could do here was that we could see that this green area here was the least dangerous zone. So what we didn't say we wanted to find a safe zone because that will not be possible. But if we work the opposite way, we want to find what is the dangerous zone and then we locate us ourselves where it's the least dangerous. Then we have something going there, I think. The Swedish Civil Contingency Agency is further work with the, what we learned from the report. First of all, we will provide guidance for lithium ion battery fires, and we hope to answer many questions and claims there is and have been about battery fires. For example, hole making in battery packs creates new thermal runaways. Yes, that is correct. It does, or it can, but it's no problem from the firefighting perspective. It doesn't make it harder to extinguish just that because we make a new thermal runaway. It is difficult to find exactly that battery cell that is thermally active at the moment. That is also very correct. That was very hard to find that, but it did not matter. If we could get water flowing inside the battery pack, that was good enough to be able to handle this incident or th this fire. Injecting water into a battery pack can damage more than a single cell that has been in thermal runaway. And that is a very good point because the battery packs in vehicles are designed to have a single cell thermal runaways without spreading to the second cell. So the method we are using must take that into account and not make a hole in a battery pack just because we have a tool for it. It must be a, a very well thought uh, thing to, to do. It takes expensive tools and not every fire department can afford that. That's also true. They can be expensive. They are cheaper and they are more expensive. But the point here is that the recommendation today from the auto manufacturers 
says that it will take copious amounts of water and it can, might take 24 hours. And if I have a unit that can respond that it takes 30 minutes to get there, then we've saved 23 and a half hour on that compared to what is recommended today. So my point is that not every fire engine need to have this kind of tool in the beginning. Car fires are very rare. EV fires that is involving the battery pack is rare, I should say. And if that becomes more and more in the future, then you could consider getting the tools at that point. This is not a recommendation to, to start buying tools. There will be new battery types with higher energy density. Will this work then? To be honest, we don't know. It might work and it might not work, but we will have to figure that out in the future. There, there are good points that says it can work and there are good points that say it might not work. So, I don't know. Then we come to the electricity. It can be more than 800 volts in a battery pack. Surely this method is dangerous then. Yes, it can be dangerous if you do it the wrong way with the wrong tools and you don't know what you're doing. But it can be made in a safe way, is what we're saying in this report. Punching holes in the battery pack destroys the entire car. Batteries are designed to withstand the thermal runaway of single cells. Yeah, that's right. As I said before, we need to have a method that lets the car handle single cell failures without the fire brigade starting to making holes in the battery pack. And finally, the car manufacturers advise against making holes in battery packs. That's right. I wonder why they do that. And maybe this report that we are producing can make car manufacturers look into this a little bit more, since it doesn't sound right to have 24-hour operations for a car fire or several hour operations. Now we have shown that it's possible and we'll hope that will inspire. Inspire was the word I was looking for. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much. In the introduction to the presentation, I said that we might be at an airbag moment right now for EV fires. And to be more specific, meant EV fires burning on the outside. We still have a lot to learn about the explosion hazards when they're burning on the inside and how to deal with that. We have a lot to learn about the toxins released from the batteries. And there is probably more to learn that I haven't even thought about that we need to learn. So I hope this video could inspire you and also give a little bit of hope that it is possible to put out EV fires. Thanks for now. Bye bye.